There's a tender presence of the Lord here. And I want us to stay in that mode. So I'd like the keys to continue to play. And would you go ahead and take your seat this, this evening and the musicians can exit, but I just want to keep the keys just playing for a moment. And I want to set the stage for tonight by reading a portion, of, a couple of verses out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul's writing to the Corinthians and he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. And you know that you were pagans who were being led astray to mute idols, however you were led. And therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says that Jesus is accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of service, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Paul makes an interesting statement to the Corinthians. The Corinthians came out of idolatry and paganism. And he says to them that there was a time when you were outside of Jesus that you were worshiping and you were serving and you were being led by mute idols. In other words, gods that did not speak. But now that you're in Christ, the Holy Spirit's been given to you and he leads and he encourages and he speaks. He's not a God on mute. Aren't we glad tonight that our God is not a God who's mute, he's a God who speaks. And he speaks. He speaks through the Holy Spirit and he leads us. Paul says, you were being led astray by these mute idols. But Romans chapter eight says that you and I as sons and daughters of God are being led by the Spirit of God. So the God that we serve, the living God, is a God who doesn't just wanna be worshiped, he wants to be in relationship. And the key to every relationship is communication and the good thing about the God that we worship is that as our Father, He speaks to us, and when He speaks to us, He speaks leadership and direction. And one of the ways that He speaks is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. One of those gifts is the gift of prophecy. And so this weekend at Prophetic Presbytery, that's what we've seen, and that might be new to a lot of you who, you know, you might come from a more traditional church background or maybe no background at all, and you're just like, wow, I didn't know that God still does that. No, he still does that because he's still our father and he still loves and he still leads and he still cares and he still directs. And he wants a living relationship with us. And that living relationship causes him to speak to us. And so we're so grateful for the gift of prophecy and we're grateful that he uses people, like all of us, imperfect vessels to speak words of edification, comfort, and encouragement to one another. And so tonight we're gonna to continue in that vein. I want to invite our presbyters. I wanna invite Wayne Drain, John Prominsky, and Les Beecham, if they would come up to the platform. Let's welcome them. And I, I love all three of these men. And Lisa Corley is also with us in the front row in a little bit. Uh, she's gonna join them in Words in Season. But all four of these people are not only dear friends, seasoned ministers, proven uh, prophetic voices, and we're just honored to have them here. And so we receive them tonight in the name of a prophet so that we can receive the reward of a prophet. Amen? And so tonight I want to invite our first candidate couple, Garrett and Sarah Prechtel. <laughs> Come on up, guys. Lord, tonight we invite you to come and to speak clearly, profoundly, powerfully, and in a way that encourages, strengthens, and fortifies. Lord, we just pray for ears to hear everything that you're saying over their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up, guys? 
know you just a little bit, so this is kind of cool. Um, I saw you both on a beach, soaking up the sun, enjoying yourselves. You're able to live in the moment. You're a content couple. You love life and doing life together. And I saw an old soul element to you guys. Uh, you like simpler things and are drawn to some throwback stuff. I saw you when I was writing uh, slow dancing to old music played out of phonograph, the turntable with a metal cone coming out of it. So um, for what it's worth, <laughs> Garrett, you, you like to simplify things and make them easier and you use technology to accomplish this. Technology complicates my life, but somehow you're, use it, you're able to use it to make it easier. Uh, you're smart, you're steady, you stay the course, you don't deviate from it. You may take longer to do something, but no one argues with the results. Um, and what, I wrote this and I'm just being as transparent as I can. I, I wrote hoping you're younger because I saw you wise beyond your years. You feel an urgency to call people back to the basics and I think it's what drives you. Um, you want to call people back to the simplicity of faith, back to the basics, and it drives you very much. It's the passion behind why you do what you do. Sarah, I saw you doing home education for young women who didn't have strong role, role models in the home. I saw you showing women how to make a house a home. I saw you sharing recipes, teaching how to make things. You're practical, you're hardworking, and you're quick to lend a hand. You quietly go about your work, and you're one of those servants who are not noticed, but when you're gone, your absence is deeply felt. But I really, really felt like you need to know, because sometimes we're so busy in service, we don't realize it, you make an awful lot happen. You just make an awful lot happen. And people like you, it's almost like you take them for granted because they're always doing something, but when they're gone, where's Sarah? Oh gosh, I wish Sarah was here. What would Sarah do? Um, this is what Sarah would do. You, you pitch in, you lend a hand, and your example is enormous. Um, it's infectious. Um, and I just hear the Lord say that your labor is not in vain, and don't ever think that it is. Don't ever think that it is. And there's something very foundational about you guys, um, very, very foundational about you, just the way that you're geared, just the way that you're cut. Um, and I believe people are gonna come out of chaos to a simplicity of faith because of couples like you. God bless you guys. It's so good to see your faces finally. And uh, I think you're following us from the other campus. I remember where you were sitting and I noticed you again this evening. So this is kind of cool, amazing. Sarah, I'm gonna start with you. The Lord said uh, he wanted to comfort you and that presbytery this year is at just the right time for you. And then he said this, so many changes, so many demands, endless schedule, no time for yourself, feeling guilty, even hesitant when you were selected, a combination of anxious and excited at the same time. And then I heard, what if we're not doing enough? What, what if they pick the wrong ones? And Jesus says to you in particular, peace. He said, in this moment, come away with me, my beloved daughter. In this moment, come to me, get away with me, and we'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. And God called me to speak into your life today, grace grace to you. Welcome to your summer of grace. Welcome to your summer of restoration and of Sabbath. And the song that came to mind was the summer of 69, Brian Adams. This is your, this is your summer, okay? And uh, this is um, shifting in your home and in your life from a frantic race to the finish line of rest each week to a journey from the starting point of Sabbath rest. 
the starting point, essential for your wholeness and for the calling that he's placed on your life. You are a hard worker. You are committed to the core, raising devoted and recklessly in love with Jesus little people. Do you have any little people? How many do you have? Three little people. How old is the oldest? Okay, so he says this, you're raising these resilient, recklessly in love with Jesus, children, and then he said youth, so that fits, and students who will change the world. Compassionate yet firm you are, nurturing yet requiring obedience. You're pretty and nice, but you can be really tough. A beautiful combination of tender and tough. Like a mother goose, I saw you guiding your brood, but, uh, help, but you were helping to guide generations here. Not just your brood, but generations. A gift of leadership, your keep, uh, what am I reading here? You keep them together in correct order. Very protected of those that you've been called to raise up. And you can bluff when needed, but you can also bite. And if you know geese, they bite, okay? Uh, <clears throat> you are a player coach. You're not on the sideline as a coach, but you are in the game with your team. You're fun, you're funny, you cry with others, and you call everyone up by your lifestyle. You'd make a good college dean of students. How thankful our God is for you. Industrious, creative in your home, with your own brood of children, and you will be mighty in the land. They will, the scripture says. You have the gift also of pregnancy. Don't let that shock you. But of birthing things. You have the gift of birthing things. I see many under your care becoming champions. Rhythms of grace. A gift to you today from God. And I want to suggest a book, John Mark Comer's The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry will be one that you love, okay? Amen. All right. <clears throat> Garrett, the Lord said, tell him he's a good man, he's a good son, he's a great pastor. Now, that may not be a position, but you're a great pastor. You're a shepherd of the flock that is under your care, and you watch over them well. You take this seriously, first for your little flock at home, and then for your wife, and then the church of God's beloved flock under your care, a watchful eye to see threats a long way away. Then I had a word in season for you, and he said, tell him he's a 300 warrior, and that you're a guardian of many people, even though you didn't have a little pigtail thing going on here, okay? A, a sense of, yeah, watchful eye, a sense of the best fields where you can find nourishment, you care for them. The moment they arrive at this campus, the campus you're at, uh, and during their stay, you make sure that they are physically, spiritually, and otherwise safe and clean and life-filled. You, your role as pastor is unique and may not even carry the title, but your heart for God and his flock are what make you an under-shepherd in this house. Are you a pastor? Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Like I said, you are a pastor in this house. You're not afraid of messes. No, we're still sheep here. Messes, fragile sheep, needy sheep, demanding sheep, downright mean sheep who butt when your back is turned, and they do. You love sheep. You're a problem solver. You show people a better way ahead. You're vital to the Radiant team in all the schedule setting, strategy, setting, location, shifting, demands, decisions. You call the team to remember the sheep. You testify of the shepherd Jesus who leads his flock with his voice and his presence rather than driving them, which is your culture leading the, the, the sheep. Calm, confident presence you're not in a hurry because Jesus isn't. A gift of life and peace to this people. God's perfect match with you. She can speed you up as needed and you can slow her down with Sabbath rhythm. God bless both of you. You okay so far? Okay. 
You, I noticed when Les was talking that you, you smell like sheep. I don't mean that literally, but I really think that there, there is a shepherding gift that you guys share. You care for people deeply from the heart, and they know it. You're not a hirelings. You're the real deal. I saw you two standing in front of a microwave, and you're waiting intently for popcorn to start popping. You're saying, hurry up. You could smell it, almost taste it, but you knew it can't pop before it's time. It was frustrating the fire out of you. I believe this is a picture of the season that you've been in. It's been a season of waiting that you have had to learn patience again. Waiting on the Lord is not passive. It's a time the Holy Spirit is doing more behind your back than you see in front of your face. Be encouraged that the smell, the aroma of something new and fresh is invading your senses and igniting fresh faith in you. You too will midwife a revival generation through your gifts of hospitality, leadership, evangelism, and music. Effective mentors, you will coach champions in the faith and you'll make beautiful music together. Garrett, you, you, you sensed something changing. You sensed a fresh move of the Holy Spirit is not just about to come. It's like it's at, it's at the door of your house walking in. You have a call to proclaim a season of, to mobilize for a movement of God's Spirit. It's already resonating deep within you. You've longed for it. You've cried out for it. You've prayed for, about it. It's time to switch your focus from maintenance to mission, from making decisions to making disciples. Prophesy, preach, connect, offer strategic hospitality, and give away what God has deposited in you so richly. Your ministry is deep in you. It, it goes back generations. I see a grandfather praying for you, calling out your name, saying, oh God, please raise him up. Call to missions has not left you. It's only been waiting to resurface for such a time as this. You'll prophesy to nations and you'll be used to release songs to be sung over the nations. And I saw you as you go, you're carrying a shepherd's staff and a guitar. And I think that was kind of a metaphor for being like David. Sometimes alone with the sheep, but always worshiping God, waiting for Samuel to call him up. Well, I'm calling you up. I'm not Samuel, but I'm calling you up. God sees more in you and has invested more in you than, than you're even aware of. There's greatness in you, buddy. God's done that. Sarah, uh, you've entered a season of final preparations for a visitation of the Holy Spirit in your family, your home, and the people you influence. And you are an influencer. I know when we say that, we usually think social media, and you may be an influencer there, I don't know. But I just think you walk into a room and there's something in you that the presence of God that influences that room. Uh, the atmosphere doesn't change you. You change the atmosphere. You're an influencer, a spiritual influencer. Your banner to carry, your message in this season is to prepare the way of the Lord. Do this by offering hospitality, praying for healing of the broken, and dispensing hope. I see you talking to people without hope and saying, yes, you can. I believe in you. It doesn't have to stay like this. Come on, let's run after Jesus and you'll be okay. There are things God has put in your hands like God gave Moses a staff and David a sling. God is saying to you like he said to them, I'll use what you have in your hand to serve my purpose. Now, you cannot let yourself feel not good enough anymore. You can't say, I'm not smart enough. I'm not trained enough. I'm not this enough. All that you need has been given. It's already in you. Huh? Be confident in the Lord. Your words will resonate equally with fathers and daughters and sons and mothers. Cross-generational anointing to heal hearts and relationships. You have the heart of a psalmist the mind of a teacher, 
and you receive prophetic words that rise up in timely moments. And I saw that you're a safe place for those who struggle with rejection and fear, things that you overcame. You are a peacemaker and a peace giver. So I come to speak peace into you and I come to impart and release prophetic insight and to tell you to prophesy to both the young and the old. Would you guys join me? <clears throat> Pastor Garrett and Sarah, for those of you who don't know them, uh, were senior pastor church planners in Colorado for several years, and uh, we had a kind of a mentor relationship, and then last year, God called them to move to Kalamazoo to be a part of what God is doing here at Radiant, and uh, now he is, I don't know, even know what his title is. Tim, tell him what his title is. <laughs> Pastor Garrett is the Associate Central Ministries Pastor. So what that means is he does a lot all the time. And Miss Sarah keeps everything going. We have Central Ministries and she is the coordinator over all things Central Ministries. Yeah. And we just love this couple. Yeah. So let's just pray over them. Lord, we confirm those words that have been spoken over Garrett and Sarah, Lord, that uh, Lord, you're so you're so clear and you're so good to speak exactly what we need in the right season. And so, Lord, we just confirm these words. We pray that it would be deeply deposited into their spirit and it would be activated. Those dreams and visions and gifts and callings, Lord, that have been under the surface, Lord, we just pray that they would spring to life and bear fruit to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Love you guys. All right, we're going to call our next candidate, Jill Chastain. Come on up, Jill. We love Jill around here. And I could say a whole lot of stuff about Jill, except then it would throw them off, so I'm not going to do that. But Jill, welcome. And Father, we, we just bless Jill, and we thank you for your presence on her life, here with her right now. And Lord, we just ask you to speak over her life. We just ask that the words that are about to be spoken will be captured in her heart and that she would hold them and ponder them and they would help set and calibrate the compass of her heart towards the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, sweet Jill. As I was thinking and praying for you, this scripture in Jeremiah chapter 20 came to mind. His word is inside me like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. And the Lord said she's a person of passion for the word of God, longing for the ways of God, and longing for the revival presence of God. You are a fire carrier. You are a fire starter. At times, you are a flame thrower. And I think your color of your shirt helps with that. Confirm that word. You are someone who likes the story of Jesus kicking out the money changers. And in that case, remember the center point was it said, zeal for your house will consume me, for my house shall be called a house of prayer. And you know that well. And you have zeal. And you're sweet and you're petite, but I would not want to be a devil around you. I'll tell you that. Prophetic in your motivation, you are jealous for God's honor and hurt deeply when he isn't honored. This world uh, really wounds you right now. You feel it. Prophetic worship inspires you. You have no problem singing a new song like we just did to your Father who is in heaven. Your devotion goes back and forth. Worship, prayer, the Word. You instruct in all three. Your life does. Expressing your life, your service, your worship. Psalm 149, may the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands. This is the glory of all of his saints. You inspire all who know you. 
through who you are and you ignite them, you stir them up. You cry easily and you're like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, because you have tears for the things of God. You are a love song lived out. Inspire greater love for Jesus by the way you so beautifully love him. People see you and they say, she loves Jesus so much, I wanna be like her. You've been misunderstood by some, especially unbelievers and even family, for being lovesick. You could have helped write the Song of Songs because you are lovesick, the right kind of sick. You support the reestablishment of David's fallen tabernacle and you are a vital part of the coming move of God, raised up for such a time as this. How are you, Jill? The nations are in your heart, Jill. You, uh, your measure is larger than one location. And I heard this, no matter how it may appear, you haven't been running in circles. You are expanding the perimeter of your field of dreams. You'd almost stopped dreaming for a while, but God restored your dreams. He restored your life, he restored your faith. A woman of vision and big dreams who is able to make them plain, to write them down, so an emerging generation can run with it. You are an inspirer, a facilitative leader who can build effective teams. I see an extroverted introvert who has plenty of cherished friends, but also draws strength from being alone in the secret place. And you're known in this secret place. So God is pushing you to be known in the public place. You would rather stay in the secret place, but that's just not your portion. You're energized by people, but refreshed by solitude. You're becoming a voice for your generation and the younger revival generation now in middle school, junior high and high school. Like a player coach, be an active participant in what the Holy Spirit is doing and make room and time to be a discipler as you go, mentor. I hear you saying to people, come go with me and we'll talk about Jesus. You're the real deal. Jill, <laughs> your calling is authentic. You are a leader with fierce faith who inspires others to follow Jesus. And I saw that you are very powerful in intercession. You're one of those God is using to make this house a house of prayer. How you doing? I had something unusual happen concerning you, and that is you were someone that God put on my heart for a word and season, and then when Pastor Lee called you up here, I thought, oh, double, double. I, uh, um, so I, I wanna kinda start in, in reverse order. I, I felt when I was just watching you that there was a period that you came through that was exhausting. Um, and if it was ever true, there was a time when you were living on a prayer. And even in that season of exhaustion, I felt like God was exalted. You're, you're, you're tenacious. And I saw you, you know, refusing to, 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 to stop pursuing the Lord. I saw you refusing to, uh, to, to stop praising him. No matter what you went through, you weren't going to let go of Jesus. No matter what you went through, you were going to hang on. You were not going to quit. And you just believed like David believed that, um, I would have, I would have lost heart if I had not seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. And what God told me about you was that there's a harvest that's coming for you. And Galatians 6, 9 says that if we won't lose heart, if we won't grow weary, 
that will reap a harvest and I really believe your harvest is coming. And so I wanna encourage you with that. Now the stuff that God gave me days ago for you, um, you're a planner, you're a note taker, you leave yourself notes and you leave others notes. I, I just saw you leaving notes for everybody, writing, writing notes. I saw you um, in, in my house growing up, my mom would write, would write notes. In fact, we would write um, um, the times that we needed to wake up. Our, my mom was our alarm clock and that was saying a lot because there were seven of us. And um, she was our alarm clock and my brother for kicks would write the neighbor's kids' names down and stuff like that. I, I see you as the as the kind of the kind of woman that you 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 leave notes. Hey, don't forget to do this. Make sure you do this. Don't do it. And even in the workplace, I see you as a note taker. Um, I I see a writer in you. Uh, you like poetry. You see beauty in scripture and how individuals were inspired to write. I see notebooks full of things that you've written. You creatively hear God's voice. You hear God's voice in a creative way, and you uh, hear God's voice best where there's the freedom to do so. Freedom's very important to you. And so you, you hear God's voice best when there's a freedom and a liberty for you to do so, when you're unencumbered and you can just give yourself uh, to the Lord. Um, you're task-oriented and you love to help. You're creative, but unlike a lot of creatives, you like to finish projects. A lot of creatives have a whole bunch of projects going, um, but you like to finish them. Um, you, I saw you helping friends paint and interior decorate. Um, you see what is needed and you come up with a designer plan. This is what's needed. This is what you ought to do. This is what I would do here. And people seek you out in that way. I have that you could run a store, that you could run a store. I, I believe that, that your best days are yet ahead. I believe it's as if you just walk through an open door that God's provided for you, and it's like so many things in your life have become new. And so I believe that you have yet to see the best to come, and that this God that you always believed with good was good. You're finding out that he indeed is. God bless you, Joe. <clears throat> so, Jill is a intercessor. Jill is professionally a counselor, but she's an intercessor. And she, uh, she, is, she exemplifies who Radiant Church is almost more than anybody. And when I was praying about candidates, she's not on our staff, but the Lord just highlighted her and said, I want you to pick Jill because I want to talk about her. And I just want to celebrate her. And so that's why you're up here, Jill. We love you so much. I want to invite... Uh, Rachel and Caleb, Stefan and Candace and Jane, would you come on up? And uh, I want Stefan and Candace because this is her campus, her location. Rachel and Caleb because, Jill, you are in the prayer room all the time praying and you're an intercessor and you're helping us build a house of prayer. And Jane and I just honor you. We love you. We're so grateful for you and what you represent. And we're grateful that God has planted you here in this house. So, Stefan, would you just pray over Jill? Father, we thank you for Jill. God, we're blessed by her intercession. God, the way that she stands on the wall and she guards the church, she guards the believers. And God, we bless her in the name of the Lord. God, we ask, God, that all of the things communicated tonight, God, would come to pass and we would see the goodness of the Lord over her life. God, the things that you have planned and ordained ahead of her, God, we call them out. We say, God, that you would do a new thing. God, you're doing a new thing. You're honoring her for what she has labored in, labored in prayer, labored in worship, labored in evangelism. God, she has helped in therapy so many, countless people by giving them those notes and saying, God, this is what you need to do. This is the way to freedom. Freedom matters to Jill, and she wants to set the captives free. And we thank you that she has blessed this house, and we bless her on the laying out of hands, and the impartation of these words. God, we bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen Jill. Awesome. All right, our final candidates for tonight are Bucky and Aubrey Thornock. Come on up. Bucky and Aubrey.
Great shirt, Bucky. I like that. Looks really good. That's a Pastor Rick Burmeister shirt. That's right. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for this couple. And Lord, we invite you. In fact, we long to hear you speak words of encouragement, edification, purpose, and destiny over their lives tonight. So Holy Spirit, come. Let these words reside in their hearts today and in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, you doing okay? Man, you guys got a lot going on. Spinning a lot of plates, a lot of life transitions coming up, uh, I can see. <laughs> In and out, here and there, ups and downs to quickly adjust to. Although there's much movement lately, it can feel like hurry up and wait at times. God is shaking things up in a good way. It's a season of reset to help you get unencumbered by decluttering your lives. It's time to adopt a travel light lifestyle that gives more freedom to move when the Holy Spirit asks you to move and more freedom to stay when he asks you to stay. Some build, some build monuments to the past and get stuck, but you too embrace movement and appropriate change to keep moving forward. And I saw that you two have shepherd's heart. You care like pastors who deeply care for children, like a good dad and a good mom and uh, for your own and for those without parents, especially. Uh, you're really drawn to the little ones and you're gonna raise up an army for this in the coming generation. Bucky, you are, you are a grace and truth guy. You know that the truth sets us free you also know that truth can be hard to face without grace. We have a generation that knows nothing about grace and they need to know the truth. That's why God's positioned you right there, a grace and a truth God. I see a pastoral administrative gift in you that sits in tension with an evangelist heart. You're passionate about seeing souls saved and then becoming disciples of Jesus creative, intuitive, prophetic gift growing in fluency and stature. And I have three words are going to follow you all the days of your life. Worship, works, and wonders. They're going to combine in you and through you as you grow in dependence on the Holy Spirit. The confidence is increasing in you to receive the enlargement that God is bringing to you. And you're a kingdom guy, whether you're on Church Street or Main Street. You're just about the kingdom. You're just about Jesus all the time. God really captured you when you got saved. It was pretty big. You're going this way and you did a 180. I mean, you turned so quick. And I, and I see some parents that are rejoicing because of what's happened to you. Aubrey, uh, you're good at staying on task and seeing things through to completion. You're really good for him. Uh, you love to help people get their art on the best canvas, their music on the best album, their gifts developed in the best and most healthy environment. You're good at organizing and event planning in ways that appear seamless and fluid in presentation. Rarely without more things on your list than you can get to. A good deeds doer who can see needs met in a timely way. Very capable woman. It's a time to adjust your rhythm of work and rest activity and reflection. You are an excellent leader, but you need to delegate more. <laughs> and see, the Lord does, he wants you to multiply yourself, but through delegation and through mentoring. There's no need for speed. Don't let yourself be driven by unrealistic expectations. You don't have to get everything done today. Eugene Peterson, writes about walking in an unforced rhythm of grace. And Jesus is moving in you in a new, in a new place of rest. Uh, just receive his rhythm. Let him set the pace. And this is going to be a good year. And I heard the Lord just simply saying, don't worry, it's going to be okay.
Hey guys, what's up? I know I cry too when Wayne speaks, so I get it. Um, I saw a pioneering spirit on you both. Uh, new, t new territory doesn't intimidate you. Um, you're unafraid of new challenges. I see travel in your future. Uh, the perfect mix would be for you to travel and encourage the body, and you know that's not your season now, but sense it for the future. Bucky, I saw, I saw you with charts and graphs and maps. Um, being certain of your future is real important to you. Um, you're thorough, you're well-planned, and that marks your gift mix. You love process and prefer the predictable over the unknown. The Holy Spirit, and I just really felt like I needed the, almost like a warning, the Holy Spirit has and will continue to mess with your need to know. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Um, Aubrey, I, I see you as fun-loving um, and, and outgoing. You love adventures and activity. And I really felt um, that there were aspects of um, he's the planner, you're the party. Um, and relationships are important to you and you get along with most but you deeply bond with few and it speaks of the kind of woman that you are and how you value relationships there's a contagious freedom about you too um, you love seeing change and transformation you love it um, you love seeing people get set free and delivered and as I was sitting there I I saw you guys, and the picture that I had was in a, in a military sense where the battle's raging, and you're the kind of couple that will hold the line. You're the kind of couple that will hold the line. You, you won't quit. You won't give in. No way, no how. It's not going to happen. We'll hold the line come what may. You're an all-in kind of couple. Um, you're, the, you're the couple that everybody would lean on and say, what would you guys do? In fact, people much older than you guys look to you guys, draw from you guys, lean on you guys, and you don't realize it, but as young as you are, you're already seen as like parents in the body. And one of the most difficult things for me when I was newly in the ministry, when I was, when I was just a young 30-something was that I was seen as a spiritual father, even by men that were a great deal older than me. And I feel like you're spiritual parents in the body. Um, and, and it's hard to see that when you're young, but I'm speaking and over you now so that your eyes will be open to it and, and just realize that, that people are, are looking at you like, like that. Um, they, and they're drawn to you because you don't quit in a day and an age when so many are. Um, you don't quit. You know who you are. You know what you're called to. You know what you're about. And, and that's infectious. And I pray that the contagion spreads um, from you guys onto everybody that comes under your leadership, upon everybody that works and comes alongside of you. Just keep holding the line. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless you guys. The uh, words that we speak, they have timing in the Lord. And your little baby, the scripture says in Psalm 139, every day of his or her life has already been written in the Lord's book. Now that isn't what the baby will do, but can do. We call it, the, I call it the Lord's book of destiny. And so as we share these things, there are dimensions. Too often candidates are like, I don't see that in my life. And I would say, yet. And so get ready, all right? Bucky, as I look at you, the prophetic word, your name is very playful, but the word is very serious. And it's, uh, it's very interesting, this combination. You put things together, puzzles, parts, pieces. You put things back together, marriages, broken hearts, even leaders. You love the book of Proverbs. You're wise. You aspire to be wise. A source of wise counsel for others, and yet a good source of comfort as well. You listen with your head and your heart, and that's not common for most men. You cry easily, and that's not common for most men. 
Although it may frustrate you, it doesn't frustrate us. Your wife feels cared for and listened to by you. That's not normal either. <clears throat> you speak several languages. You speak her love language. You speak Gen X. You speak Millennial. And you speak Z. And if you don't, you can speak in tongues too. Okay? Because that's a variation. All right? Do you speak in tongues? Yeah, the Lord said that. Okay. I was trying to be safe. You strive to understand and not judge. You'd be a responsible uh, designated driver. You would. You're a gentleman. You're responsible financially and related successfully to both ministry and the marketplace. I don't know if you're on staff, but you can relate to both of them. Mature for your younger age. You are respected and you're not a respecter of persons. You're not depressed by the oppressed and you're not impressed by those who have a lot of stuff. I believe that there is governing gifting inside of you, even elder gifting in the days ahead. You can see both the pieces and the whole can run things but are willing to be a follower. You carry a sword of the spirit at all times. You carry, and that's the sword of the spirit and can be counted on for an encouraging word shared at just the right time. You can share words in season. It's as simple as when you see people, ask God how he wants to encourage them and you're gonna do it. You protect this house via your prayer and your loyalty and your finances. Your children are impressed with you. You're a good dad. Though tempted to doubt your abilities and depth of devotion, Jesus doesn't doubt any of them. There is still some residue, Bucky, from unrealistic demands and religious standards in your childhood, which he's freeing you from and healing you of. Increasingly, as you believe this simple reality, you are loved by God and you are pleasing to him. Respected. And you can clap at that. That's a good thing to clap at. Yeah. You are respected and you are admired and you are needed so badly. You are destined to influence the lives of generations to come. Get used to the idea that you're going to get real old and wrinkly and you're going to still influence people. So there. Aubrey, a treasure to your husband a hero to your children, a delight to your Savior, a blessing to this church. You are artistic. You are musical. You create beauty. You create welcome. You have the ability to give color to the black and white. You release wonder with songs that you sing, with food that you make, with books that you read to your children. You are good at so many things. You know, Proverbs 31 is used uh, wishfully at so many funerals. And those who know the people know that that is not who they were. But you know this, you are a Proverbs 31 woman. And I saw the poster of the, um, what's her name? I wrote it out, Rosie the Riveter. And she's doing this. And it says, you can do this. And the genius of you is you know you can't, but you are convinced you can because you can do all things through the one who calls you to do all things. And you have that out. I can do anything he calls me to. Humble, dependent, filled with faith for the impossible of which you have experience in your own life and your battles and in the lives of those you love. In this world, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because... I have overcome the world. You are a dependent overcomer. You have scars. And both of you have experienced great loss and trials and even a form of persecution. You've been persecuted. Most of the time we think we're going to get persecuted by the government or the world. Most of the time we're persecuted by the church and our families. And you've experienced this. And rather than pushing God away, you drew closer to him. Rather than decreasing your faith, you grew in faith and obedience and trust. 
People occasionally are jealous of the gifted, able, happy people and rarely see their scars, <laughs> wrongly assuming they've been given everything. You don't waste your time being distracted by them. Instead, yours is a life of generosity, praise, service, prayer, hospitality. You are called in partnership with your amazing husband, Bucky, to see God's kingdom actually come to earth, even as it is in heaven. God bless you both. You guys want to stop it, Jane? Come on up too. I'm going to have a uh, same crew come on up. And while they're coming, let me just say this over you. I just want to add this. When I think of you, Bucky, I think of, behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. You are a pure-hearted man of integrity, faithful. And Aubrey, when I think of you, I think of Deborah, who has a leadership prophetic mantle on her life, but serves in such a subtle uh, in a powerful, subtle way that doesn't need to be seen or celebrated, but you are, uh, you're one of my favorite prayer leaders. When, when uh, I watch morning prayer and you lead, it's like one of my favorite prayer services. So you're awesome. So uh, Stefan, introduce him. If you don't know, this is Pastor Bucky who oversees our kids ministry. So a few of the words spoken specifically one of the most profound things, though, is the being released from the spirit of religion in his past. Um, the Lord delivered you and your family from Mormonism. And uh, just so thankful for, yeah, Les used to be a Mormon. So uh, just the accuracy of the words uh, spoken over both of you, delegation. Got to remember that one. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, just we're blessed by this couple that radically moved to Kalamazoo a couple years ago to be a part of what God's doing here. And so we want to pray for them. Lord, we receive these words and we receive this couple, Lord, as even a sign of <laughs> how much you love and delight in us as a church. And Lord, we uh, ask for these words to go down deep. Lord, I thank you just for... Uh, the, the clarion call even within these words, um, just even Bucky as an evangelist, as a revivalist, as one who's going to lead the next generation, Lord, as a deliverer, we just proclaim that, that, that you will lead many into revival, Lord, for uh, for Aubrey, this leader in her home, leader in this church, this Deborah, woman with authority on her words, this mandate, this wisdom to govern, Lord, a true spiritual gift of administration, Lord, we ask that you would give her that discipleship anointing to multiply, to, to be able to impart to thousands, that thousands would, would be imparted with the gifts that you've given, Lord. We just ask a strengthening in their marriage, Lord. We ask their roots would be able to go down deep, Lord. And we, we ask that nothing, nothing the enemy would come against them would succeed, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we speak more anointing, more authority, more power, Lord. Let their gifting fan into flame the gifts even more as they flourish in your house. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Love you guys. All right, let's all stand up to, uh, tonight. Let's just shake it out. We're going to transition and uh, we're going to release the presbyters to move around the room and to begin to minister and give words in season. Uh, tonight, I want to just encourage everybody of this before we take a seat is this is everybody participating. So while they're moving around the room, I want you to pray for those who are receiving words. And I want you to stay in a posture of prayer. This isn't, uh, sometimes we can kind of sit back and watch, but even while we're watching them give words, let's be in a posture of prayer uh, that kind of fuels those words and pray for those people receiving words in Jesus' name. Lord, tonight speak ever so clearly, and we're thankful for your leadership and your voice in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. You can, you can be seated. You know, we've been seeking the Lord for you and trying to hear and trying to write down what we've got, God, and we believe God has spoken to us. And it's really important to us for everybody to be able to hear from God. We believe that God speaks 
We believe that we can hear. But we're often challenged by folks that just say, I just cannot hear God. My friend can, my wife can, my husband can, my pastor can, but I just can't hear God. And I've searched the scriptures for a long time and I've only found one legitimate reason that you couldn't hear from God. It says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. So there's an expectation from Jesus that if you are a sheep, if you know him, if you've been born again, you will know his voice, you will hear him. So I just wanna start right off the top right off the top to just make it easy. If there are you in here tonight and you would like to receive Jesus as your shepherd, you'd like to become a sheep. Let me tell you how you do it. It says in Romans 10 that if we would confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, then the promise we will be saved. So I'd like for us all to be in a position of hearing. So if you're here tonight and you wanna make it right with God, You'd like for me to pray a real simple prayer with you that would change your life and change everything. I'd like for you to take a real faith step because to become a sheep, you have to make a public confession because we don't want to be ashamed of Jesus. He sure wasn't ashamed of us. So if you're here tonight and you'd like for me to pray with you, you'd like to join the 25 people that gave their lives to Jesus Sunday morning over at the other campus, I'd like for you to stand up wherever you are around the room. And if people stand, then I'll, I'll lead you in a prayer. Go ahead and do that right now if that's you. This is your chance. Thank you, Lord. All right. Anybody want to stand? I'm going to count backwards from four. Four, three, two, one. If you just need a little more time to think about it, there will be folks down here at the end of the service that you can talk to. You can give your life to Jesus. But don't leave this place tonight not being a sheep. Make sure that you, Jesus is Lord of your life, okay? All right? Come on, lean in, smile, do something. All right. You guys ready to go? Sir, how's it going? What's your name? John. John. I believe the Lord spoke to me and told me that God is healing the hurts of your heart and removing the pain of your past. And now many days from now, you'll be used to comfort other men. And I sense the work that God has been doing in your life. And I literally wrote down, God has been invading your bubble. And it's getting harder and harder for you to contain yourself. And he wouldn't have you contain yourself. And I really, really felt, you John's wife? Okay, well, I felt that God showed me that um, you've been praying for your dad. And, um, and that a lot of what's been happening in your father's life has been because of your prayers. And so God bless you. What's your name? John and Jennifer. Jennifer, thanks for praying for your dad. I prayed for my dad, um, and I was able to lead him to the Lord two months before he passed away in the hospital. And keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, and let God just mess with your world, man. He's only good, all right? God bless you. Candace, can you stand up? Don't look behind you. I was looking right at you. Would you like your husband to stand? Would it make it less awkward to be? Okay. <laughs> when I saw you yesterday, the Lord started stirring in my heart and I didn't know if I'd get to see you again. So I wanted to take this moment to share with you what I saw starting on Sunday. Candace, what a difference I see in you from the last time that I was here. You went from being a daughter of this house to being the mother of this house. There is a mantle on you that sees those who feel unnoticed. You are able to identify the strengths in people and there's an authority that you speak from when you share what you hear God speak. You are being called out to be a prophetic voice in this house. I see a teaching gift being perfected in you. Your voice is needed in this house. 
You will help steady the wayward son. You will help draw um, people to the throne room of Jesus, and you will break off any oppression that has been holding them from filling a life of freedom. I feel like the Lord is saying, Candace, as you wish, Candace, the answer to your prayers is whatever it is, I want to grant you the desires of your heart. Candace, you are so tender to the things that are near to God's heart. You have His ear. Come boldly to His throne. Lay them at the altar, the things that are burdening you, and you are going to be a witness of God's power being on display when you step up and you take hold of the position of leadership that has been placed on you, that you are walking in, that people identify, and you need to grab hold of it because you are truly gonna be a powerhouse. You are a powerhouse, and I just wanna encourage you, don't be intimidated by the assignments that you're given because you are ready. You are so ready for it. I don't know why the enemy has let you think that you're not ready. It is such a lie. You have been so tender and trained and anointed. The favor of God is on you. Don't let any thoughts of someone is better, not more knowledgeable, able to articulate it better, keep you from stepping backwards from what God has said, Candace, I am calling you. And whatever I need accomplished, when you partner with me, it will be done through you. So you take away any doubt, you take any, take away any self-deprecation that you put on yourself, and you grab hold of what the Lord is placing on you, because it is God's, and it is something that He is, cho He's choosing you. You have been chosen because you are going to be such a beautiful, a beautiful expression of what this house needs. And it's what's in you, Candace. Bless you. Would you stand? What's your name? Aaron. Aaron. Uh, as I passed by you, the Lord said, I've given him an idea from me. Now, it may have been something a while back or something that's in your head right now. And he said, it's a God idea. It's not just your idea. But there's a temptation in you that says, Lord, provide the finances and I'll take a step. And he says, take a step and I'll send the finances. Does that make any sense to you? Okay, I give it to you from him all the way from Omaha, Nebraska. Amen. Okay, there's a guy right here in a red shirt, black cap. What's your name? Mike? Mike, it's been a time to press in, to earnestly seek the Lord about your next move. You know the Lord has been stirring your spirit and you sense change in the atmosphere. Here's a promise. When we seek the Lord earnestly with all of our heart, he lets us find him. The Lord has not been hiding. He's been waiting for you to come to rest and to simply trust Him for your future. I bring you another promise. There's hope and a future for those who love Him. Just love Him. Just trust Him. It's going to be a smooth transition in August. Be at peace. What's your name? Marvin. Marvin. Did I, did I see you operating a camera? Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, all right, all right. I'm, I, I put, hoping that you were the cameraman, I put, a, I put that you're a servant in God's house and he sees you and your heart to serve. And I know that part of what you do has you in the shadows, but no one's in the shadows um, with God and that your heart and your example are contagious. 
there's, there's just something about the way that you serve, about the way that you go about what you do, what you do. People watch. People watch. I'm going to tell you, and I don't think it's just because I'm a pastor, but I notice how people serve. And you've got a servant's heart in this house, and God sees you, man. You're a blessing. And Wait a second. Stand back up. I didn't, ca I didn't catch your name. What was it? Marvin. Marvin, when I saw you, I saw a gift of leadership all over you. And I saw even a, a business type of ownership, like mantle that God was placing on you. But more importantly, I saw what you were going to be able to do was offer a place for people to be able to come and have an opportunity to express their gifts, to be able to be a part of a team. And more importantly, I saw you giving them a place to feel like they have a family. And I just really believe that the Lord has given you a, a great heart to be able to see those that need someone to give them a chance, to give them another another opportunity, that you, someone that hasn't given up on them. And I really believe that the Lord's gonna stir in you a desire to help make that possible for them. And I don't know what kind of schooling you have, but I really see a mantle of, of just entrepreneurship, like just high level thinking, like creativity, being able to start up something. And so I just wanna encourage you to pray and ask the Lord how that unfolds about what that looks like specifically. But I really just see you being the one that people are gonna to look to, that people are gonna to come to because of the wisdom that you have and the, the knowledge that you have on certain things. And so I just wanna encourage you, don't put yourself in the background. Don't put yourself in the shadow or put it off on someone else because it's very evident that God's calling you higher, that God's calling out the gifts that He's put in you. And so you need to find out and tap into those and be willing to just put yourself out there because God's got something He's gonna really use that he's put in you to really help other people feel like they belong. All right, bless you. Just You just can't make this stuff up. Marvin, would you stand up again? And uh, here, here's the deal. The Lord wants to remind you, his great leaders started as servants and that the way that we ascend is by descending. And so Joseph cared for sheep, David cared for sheep, and you're caring for camera. And God says, this is the way of greatness, unseen, getting lower and lower. And then he says this, that leadership is upon you, and God is gonna use you if you're willing. Don't look less upon yourself than you are. You have been selected by God today through three of us to say, his hand is upon you. Keep serving faithfully and anticipate the Lord himself promoting you. Amen? Amen. Um, I've got a word for the sound guy. What's your name? Uh, Brendan. Brendan. Can you stand up and still do that? Brendan, I just looked back here while you were running sound during worship. And I heard you do more than turn the knobs. You hear the moods of the Holy Spirit. God uses you to create atmospheres that are conducive for meaningful worship. And he uses you to create environments where music releases the prophetic, even as the prophetic inspires timely songs. You turn down the hype sliders and you push up the authentic sounds of honest worship and powerful praise. I honor you tonight for, you, for your come early, stay late service to God's people. Amen. You're much more than a knob turner. You help release the sounds of freedom, the broken here, and find hope in. I'm just gonna take a shot here. Do all five of you guys know each other in this row? Uh, could you guys stand up? Thank you, God, for being good to me. Um, I, uh, I saw you guys as a band of brothers. 
and I saw you as a tremendous encouragement to one another. It's almost like when you get here to church and you see each other, yes. You know, and I just really heard the Lord say, be willing to expand your band. Um, be willing to expand your band. I see you guys, what you have, it's powerful. Your connect is powerful and your influence is powerful. And there's something about you guys as a band of brothers together, I believe that God wants to spread. And there have been words that have been going over the body of Christ recently about how God is going after the men in the church. And it's guys like you that he's gonna use. And so guys, let them have it. Uh, give it to him, be the influence that he's called you to be. God bless you guys. Hi, are you, are you guys together? Uh, you're married? Awesome, can y'all stand up? What's your names? Jerry. Jerry? Roberta. What? Roberta. Roberta, Jerry and Roberta. This is what I saw over the two of you, that you two are so crucial to this house. You have such a willingness to serve just about anywhere and it shows how much you have a heart to help build God's kingdom. You are also great defenders of this house and I saw the two of you really being used to fight off the attacks that the enemy is trying to throw at this house. You are both great assets to the people on this staff. There's so much behind the scenes that the two of you do that nobody really knows about, but you two are about the integrity of this house, about ways that you can serve in this house. And I just saw that you being pillars of why this house is still gonna be standing years down the road because of how you two are helping frame the, the strong foundation, the strong support that it needs because of the two of you. And I just wanna Thank you for showing what it looks like to really do whatever it is that God asks when you two are very capable of doing so much more. But I just wanna thank you for what you have been willing to lay down, what you've been willing to serve and how you are really going to be used in a way to help build this house into the name that God's gonna use it in this city. All right, so bless you both. You're welcome. We're way back here. You're in the red. Would you stand? Can you tell me your name? Adler. Adler. What a great name. It's what? It means eagle. Oh, my gracious. Wait, how old are you? You're 12. Would you stand up on this chair so everyone can see you a little bit better? Good. He took his shoes off. I wouldn't have done that, okay? <laughs> now, here's why I'm calling him up. Um, he was singing as loud as any of you during worship. He just was going for it. And, and the Lord, he really spoke to me and said, my hand is on you, that he's calling you to be a part of the answer to everything ugly in the world. And he's calling 12-year-olds. And you in particular, he says this, in a world where right is wrong and wrong is white, right, black is white and white is black, you'll be someone who stands up and tells the truth. And I'm gonna give you a loud voice to tell the truth and never be afraid of what they say to you when you tell the truth. Our whole culture is insane, but you're not. And he's gonna use you powerfully and I want to recognize God's call is on you. It may be in the marketplace, it may be in the church, but you have the call of God on your life and God is going to powerfully use you. Can you receive that from the Lord? Yes, yes he says, right on. I want to call any other 12-year-olds who hear this and say, I want that word for me. I want to be a voice. I don't want to compromise. I don't want to live for my screen. I don't want to live for TikTok. I don't want to live for reels. I want to live for Jesus. If Jesus will help me, I want to live for him. If that's you, would you stand up right now in this room? 12 years old. 12 years old. Yeah. Okay. 
and we're gonna we're gonna spread it a little bit from nine to thirteen. And you're saying I want this from nine to thirteen. You're saying I want this. I'm really serious about this. I want this. Okay, let me see everybody. You know what? It's not by your power that you can do this. You know what your role is? Right on, brother. Right on. Your role is saying, Jesus, I want you more than anything else. I want you more than I want people to like me. I want you more than uh, I want my hair to look right. I had to get over that. I want you. I want you more than anything. And he says, if you want me more than anything, then I'll use you more than anything. If you're around them and know them, would you put your hands on them right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you're calling out this generation of nine through 13 year olds, and you're gonna use them to change planet Earth. Lord, infuse in them such a courage right now, it would go far beyond their understanding. Infuse in them the reality that God's fingerprints are on them. Thank you for Adler's example. May it spread throughout this church and then throughout this world in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Can you applaud them? I have a, I have a word for a, a friend I've known a long time named Daniel Brimer. Would you stand up? I've known Daniel from back in Arkansas days, and he's a, so I know some things about him. But I felt like the Lord gave me some specific things for him. July 4th will be a time to celebrate a new freedom in your spirit with fresh hope for an increased freedom of movement. Don't worry about provision, just focus on God's presence. His presence is the place of more than enough where fullness of joy can be accessed. I hear songs of joy rising up in your spirit to release new strength for the weary. The body of Christ is tired right now. He's gonna have some vintage songwriters to write some songs of joy, and you're one of them. A fresh call to praise, prophesy, and to proclaim the good news. Members of your family will join you as you join them. Be at peace. I see a shining season with you riding in a new convertible with a top down and a big smile on your face. If, if you were raised in a single parent home, would you stand? I cannot encourage you enough to realize how great an influence you are. You're more common today than ever before, and maybe growing up it wasn't as common, but today it is. And I believe that God is gonna use you to parent and mentor the next generation. You feel what they feel on a deeper level. You understand, you get it. And I almost felt caution to put like, a, like an age thing on this, but then I heard the Lord say, don't limit it. Don't limit to any age. And I just wanna pray over you because I believe that there is something about being raised in a single parent home where the enemy would lie to you and say, you can't be used, you can't mentor, you don't. My Bible says that God's a father to the fatherless, that he puts the solitary in families. And I just wanna pray over you. Could you extend your hands towards them? If you're close by, you know them, put a hand on them. Father in heaven, I thank you for these that were raised in single parent homes. And God, I thank you that in each and every situation, you were the difference maker. And because they found that to be true, they can believe for others and they can lead others. They discovered you. They pushed past all of the obstacles that they were raised with and they found you, Jesus, and they clung to you, Jesus, and they discovered that you are the God who's more than enough. They discovered that your grace is greater. They discovered that your plans are full of hope and a future and you intend no harm. God, I thank you that you are gonna bless these to bless others. I thank you that these are gonna be mouthpieces for you, oh God, that they're gonna speak as the oracles of God. 
Father, loosen their tongues, open up their mouths, and Father, I pray that you would push their hearts past their pain into the next generation to be used mightily by you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hi, can you stand up? What's your name? Mike. Mike. Mike, um, what I saw over you was that you have been on the receiving end of some unfair attacks and accusations that have not been, uh, that have been unjustified and not felt right. And I saw that you've been trying to defend yourself and it just hasn't seemed to go better. And I, heard, I really felt this strongly that um, if you would be willing to say, I'm sorry, not in a way that admits that you were wrong, but just that it, you realize that it hurt, you're going to see that the Lord's going to do so much more through the simple action, and there's going to be a breakthrough that you've been trying to do on your own. But when you do that, you're going to see the Lord begin to undo everything that has been all tied up in knots. And so I just want to encourage you to, sometimes you have to humble yourselves for the Lord to be able to rise us up. And I believe if through that, you're going to see the Lord do something pretty, pretty remarkable. Bless you. You're welcome. This guy right here, what's your name? Cameron. You stand up, Cameron. Cameron, I just heard the phrase, get ready. Prepare yourself to receive an increase in anointing and power to heal the sick and to set captives free. Just pray, just lay your hands on the sick and pray prayers of faith. You're not the one healing, it's him, but he wants to use you. Just make up your mind to doubt your doubts and to believe your beliefs. The book of James is gonna come alive with insight and revelation as you take time to read it with fresh eyes. Direction will come and God will equip you to equip others how to live for God and move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Get ready. God is moving in your deepest places. Thank you so much. Amen. Bucky, would you stand? Of course, Bucky was a candidate. Before I share with him, I want to say to the 9 to, th to 13 year olds, do your reps. What do I mean by that? You, you just need to show up. You just need to go to youth. You just need to do what mom and dad, it's, it's kind of like Miyagi, wax on, wax off. It's just real simple, okay? It's not complex to follow him, do that, okay? Now, Bucky, in coming out of Mormonism, people say things to you who are Mormons. You disappoint them. I was a Mormon. And the scripture says this, Jesus said, those who believe, you will lay your hands on sick people and they'll be healed. He says, you will drive out demons in my name. And then he says this, you will drink deadly poison and it will not harm you. Most of you will never drink deadly poison, but you will be forced to drink words that people have spoken to you. You feel that? Yeah. And I'm going to pray that every bit of that poison is removed from you and that it, it doesn't come back ever again. Even the sense of disappointing grandma and grandpa and any comment they made that's poisonous, that he's gonna get the anti-venom to you right now. And I believe the Lord wants to do this. If any of you, when I'm describing this, say, things come right to my mind that were spoken to me that still hurt in this room, they still hurt. That means they're still poisonous and God wants to take that venom out of you because he promised it in Mark 16. If that's you in this room, you can stand with Bucky and we will remove the poison from you right now and it's not gonna hurt you anymore. Anyone, someone said something to you and you still remember it, it still hurts, still hurts, still hurts. Jesus said, in my name, you're gonna, even though you drink that, it's not gonna harm you. Bucky, in the name of Jesus, the anti-venom is applied to you now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And all over this room, Lord, we declare, although you have drank, drunk uh, deadly poison, it no longer has the power to harm you. We apply the anti-venom of the blood of the Lord Jesus and the finished work on the cross, and we break the harm in every person in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you applaud the Lord?
two things uh, that I want to share in closing. The number one, Ann and Randy Betts, would you guys stand up? Uh, these are dear friends of ours. And uh, full disclosure, they have both served on staff and as elders in this church. They were some of the first families uh, that came to Radiant 26 years ago. And some of you know them, some of you don't. But when I was up on the platform and I was, I was kind of praying, I was like, come on, let one of the presbyters give Ann and Randy a word. And uh, the Lord said, no, I'm gonna use you to give the word. And I heard the word, the Lord say that faithful you have been, faithful he will be. And that you've come out of one season and the Lord just wants you to know that have no trepidation because the next season is not up to you to design. The Lord says that he already has a blueprinted out for you. And just like 20 years ago, you didn't know what the next 20 years would look like to get to where you have been. The Lord says he already has the next 20 years mapped out for you. And this is a season of, of finishing and it's a season of rest and preparation and at just the right time. And, and I, I sense from the Lord that in, within 45 days, there's gonna be a door that opens before you that's gonna be a linchpin to what lies ahead. So I just love you. We honor you and bless you guys in Jesus' name. <laughs> and last but not least, Daniel, would you stand up? Daniel's a uh, new friend here. Yeah, you. Uh, Daniel uh, drove up here from Kansas City, Missouri to be a part of Prophetic Presbytery. And just because he's hungry for the Lord. And here's what you don't know about Daniel. Daniel is a father in the faith. He's been part of revival movements and outpourings of the Holy Spirit that are things that you and I read about that we've been impacted by. And one of the things that I've sensed from the Lord is that in the body of Christ, we don't honor worship fathers. When you're a preacher and you get to be 65, 70, 75 years old, Jack Hayford, you're a statesman. In the body of Christ, unfortunately, when you're 40 years old as a worship leader, you're done. And, but that's not true in, in the kingdom of God. There is high honor for fathers, and we need fathers in the, the Levitical order within the church of worship leaders, of musicians. What you carry and what you have on the inside is more than musical ability, it is the spirit of wisdom. And we just honor you. I honor you because here you are at the stage uh, in, in life where you could just hang it up, but you're so hungry for the presence of God, you got in your Honda Accord and you drove to Kalamazoo, Michigan to be a part of three days of prophetic presbytery. And it still burns in your heart. And we just became friends. You reached out. You reached out and said, I want to come up there. And uh, sir, I just honor you. I honor what you carry. We need you in the body of Christ. I believe your best days of impartation and multiplication are still ahead of you. And we're honored to have you here. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> let's, let's stand up together. The final word that I heard from the Lord was build an ark. <clears throat> so... Here in a few moments. Wayne, did you have something? Did, did you get something else? Oh, just the microphone, okay. Um, hasn't this been powerful tonight? Father, we're just so grateful for your voice. And Lord, we just pray for every word that not one word would fall to the ground, that every word would be seed deeply planted in good soil. And Lord, that we would tend it, we would cultivate it, we would care for these words, and that we would ponder them in our hearts and we would take them before you, and we would allow you to water them by the Holy Spirit, let them take root, let them begin to grow, let them bear fruit, and let all the glory be to you, Jesus. We honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.